J Jay Sean, Chris has said that if you weren't on some sort of all Big Ten team, he was going to drive to the <laughs> conference and, and argue on your behalf. Um, how did it feel to, to get the award and to get the support you obviously did from your coach? Um, you know, I was really surprised, um, you know, second team. I mean, it's just, you know, just an honor to be on that with, you know, so many great guys in our league. I mean, if you look at it, there were, um, you know, a lot of guys that were left off that I thought were, you know, one of the, that are top guys in this league. So, um, you know, I just thank my teammates and, and, and coaches around the Big Ten for, you know, voting for me. So. Jason, was any part of you like angry over the last two years that you weren't on one of these teams? Especially last year, you seemed deserving of, of one of the spots, and it was surprising that you weren't on there. Um, I wouldn't say that. I just looked at it as motivation. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, I, I think that it comes down to winning. And, you know, I didn't, we didn't do that last year, so. Jason, what does it say about the state of the program that you guys are winning all of these individual awards in a year when no one really gave you guys much of a chance in the league. What does it say about the state of the program? Um, that I think um, we've had the the ability to turn it around very quick. Um, I don't think anybody coming in uh, saw this coming. You know, finish top in the league and you know have a Big Ten Player of the Year and a couple all all conference guys like and national co I mean the coach of the year like that's that's just saying a lot of you know how we believed in each other and um, how the coaching staff uh, just put all the pieces together um, out there on the floor so you know all the credit to them and you know all the credit to my teammates and these guys for working hard and you know we still got a lot of work to do and we're looking forward to it what does it mean to you to have coach of the year what does it mean to see your coach get an award like that I mean he he deserves it uh, I mean, just, I, I, I mean, there's nothing really I could say, like, other than he deserves it. I mean, he's just one of those guys who, you know, come in. He's a real genuine coach. He means, he means what he says, and he, he just looks out for the best interests of all of our players. You know, he's very humble. Like, you know, today when we found out uh, who made the teams or whatever, like, he left himself out. There, you know, other coaches had to tell us that he won Coach of the Year, and that just speaks how, you know, humble he is and how happy he is to coach us. It's not about him, and that's why he deserves it the most. Kater, we heard you on Senior Day. Yeah, I, I was going to go. Okay. Sorry, I got it. <laughs> Kater, we heard you call Coach Holtman the Coach of the Year in, on Senior Day. Uh, when did you know that that he was going to make an impact on this program like he's made? Um, this year? Uh, probably in those first few weeks when he came uh, to campus, especially that first time when you know, it was a nasty he flew in from wherever he was and just wanted to meet us for like an hour or whatever. From that point on, we knew he was, like JT said, a genuine guy that wanted the best for us. And from that moment on, he treated us like family. What did it mean for you, for Coach Holton, the campaign for you like he did all year to, to win these individual awards and ultimately win Big Ten Player of the Year? I mean, it means a lot. I mean, he's been campaigning for us since the beginning of Big Ten. Like you said, when if JT didn't get an all-conference, you know, not he was going to pull up on, you know, the Big Ten, whatever the conference or wherever it is. So, I mean, Kayla's been great this year, and it is a testament to him and the work and the faith he's put in us. Kayla, okay, coach has, has talked about conversation he had with you in the offseason about what he learned from other coaches, kind of about the way you that you played. Um, I'm just curious, what, what, when was that exactly, if you can rem remember? And then, like, how did you take that, a guy that, I guess at the, at the time you didn't know all that well, sort of criticizing your game a little bit? It was, it was a few weeks after he solidified himself here, so probably like mid-July, mid-late July, mid -July um, we had that conversation, I think. Um, you know, it was good for me. He's an honest guy. He says, you know, what's on his mind. I think that was good for me and him because now we built that trust in each other from that moment on that I was going to work, you know, to, to prove everybody else wrong. At your your success this year, does, what does it make you think about last year maybe and, and what you could have done as a junior had you not, you know, been injured before the year? Because you were, you were feeling good coming in the last year, right? About the same you did coming yeah. in this year? Uh, I, mean, I, try, I really tried to think about it like that, about the what ifs, just because it, it could never it could never come to reality. So I mean, I've thought about it from time to time when you guys ask me stuff like that or, you know, JT talks about it at home. But I mean, it, I mean, it would have been a lot different last year, you know, if I obviously had played and played up to this level. But, you know, a year, wait, a year later, it's just fine with me. Does JT bring it up a lot at home? No, no, no. <laughs> not, no. We were when we were sitting out last year, and we were all kind of down on each other just because it was a rough season. We talked about it, but other than that, we just kind of look forward and look forward to this year.
Now that you've, you have a little bit of a chance to reflect before you guys start the next part of the season, uh, when you look back at these last couple of games and the sort of the stretch run down the season when you've talked about the fatigue and everything, how tired have you been and how beneficial is this time now to, to get a break? This is a big week off, not off from, I mean, off from games, obviously. Um, but everybody's tired at this point. A lot of people that have played a lot of minutes. Um, and, and intense Big Ten games. It hasn't been blowouts like earlier in the Big Ten season. There's been a lot of close games coming down you know, to the end of it. So you know, we're all a little tired, but this, this, this week is going to be big for us. Kata, similarly to Bill's question, um, when you were recovering last year, you know, thinking forward in terms of coming back and, and what you could accomplish this year, did you see this in your future potentially? I mean, you knew you were good. You knew you were coming off a good summer. But Big Ten play of the year, was that in your head? Uh, that, I, it really wasn't. I knew I was going to be good, obviously, but then obviously, as the, I mean, obviously, but as the weeks went on, the summer and preseason started, we we all kind of started forming these thoughts in our head that you know we could be really good, and then I could be you know pretty good this year for the Big Ten. And similar question for you, Caleb. You know, last year playing high school, obviously accomplished a lot there, but you know coming in, this is a whole different level. Did you foresee kind of this Big Ten? team of the year type of thing? Uh, I mean, I didn't never looked at it like that, but it was always the goal. You know, you put the hour, you put work in, in the gym, and you want to see it pay off. So something like this is, is blessing. Kata, just what are your guys' emotions as, you know, you guys are only guaranteed to play two more games this season. Um, just what has been going through your mind as you think about what this past season has been and assuming that you do move on next year, just what what are you thinking as you go into your final couple of games here? We just want to make every every game count. You know, like you said, it could be two guaranteed games, it could be you know ten or more. So we just want to take every every game and cherish it. You know, like, like it could be our last because at this point it could be. You know, this will be our last time playing with JT and Cam, no matter what. And I've been with you know, been within the last four or five years, so. I mean, we just want to cherish every moment. Even today in practice, we just kind of looked at each other like this is coming to an end no matter what happens. Are you still a little tired with the <laughs> little slip up there? No, that is, I was, my mind was moving too fast. <laughs> my mouth couldn't catch up. <laughs> when you see uh, you as uh, freshman of the year, does that kind of just put the icing on the cake of what you kind of determine as kind of a successful first year? Or does it show kind of the progress that you've made throughout the year? Uh, I feel like, like you said, I feel like it's just like a pro just showing the progress. But I feel like there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Like, that's not where I want it to end. I don't want that to be like the peak of my career. So, I feel like I just need to keep putting the work in. in the, so what, kind of, what kind of challenges does that bring? Seeing you, or what does that mean to you to say this is not the peak of my career? Uh, that I'm gonna try to expand my game as much as I can to get to the next level, as far as being good on the next level. <laughs> Caleb, I know we've talked to a lot of the older guys about what this season has meant to them and the struggles of the past few years, but, I mean, you're a new guy here. So, I mean, just, to just what have, what's what been kind of going through your mind? I mean, did you have any of these uh, – did you expect to be on a team with a really good chance to win a Big Ten championship at the end of the season? And just what are your overall thoughts on as you go into tournament time here? I never really took it as like a like a throwaway season just because we have seniors who like this is this is their last cut games like this is their last season so I always wanted to put my best out there for them and best out there for my other teammates so it was just kind of like it was it's just like a perfect storm like everybody was on the same page and I know I wasn't just trying to throw it away and just throw away a season so. Kata, what was your reaction when you got the news? I was just, <clears throat> I was really excited just because. Like Ken was kind of pointing out earlier, just you put in a lot of work in. Obviously, me coming off of a of an injury season and a rough couple of years here to to win a Player of the Year is just like you know it, it all it meant something. It all paid off. When you hear Big Ten Player of the Year at Ohio State, like who comes to your mind? Evan first, and then you know Jim Jackson. Scooney's always around, so it's like names like that. Just and to be a part of that is just an honor. Who was the when you got out of practice? I assume like who was who'd you call first? Who'd you talk to first? I have not called anybody yet because we had a rush over here. So my phone is vibrating right now <laughs> in my pocket <laughs> because I haven't called anybody yet. So, Who do you think is was the first person to hit you up, if you had to guess? I, I, probably my mom, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how exactly did the coaches tell you? Like, uh, how did you find out exactly? So they told me like right before we started uh, like practice or whatever. And then, like JT said, we 
huddle around practice, and then he told everybody, you know, JT was second team, Caleb's uh, all freshman team, and I won player of the year, and then we all like jumped around, jumped on each other, and it was a little crazy moment, but you know, that's how we, everybody found out. Kate, who was your favorite player growing up when you were a kid? Like college or NBA? Just anybody. Anybody uh, that you watched playing basketball and thought, I, I like that guy. Kobe was like the generic answer, but it's true. Um, Kobe, Tracy McGrady. Um, and as I got older, it like shifted to like current players like Kawhi and Paul George. I just didn't know, when you're a young guy like that and everybody has you know players they admire, what's it like when you start maybe entering the idea of Maybe I have a shot to sort of be like that. You know what I mean? Like, what? How did? You, what was that transition like for you to be in from being a kid who liked Kobe to a guy who has a chance to be a really good player at a high level? Uh, it's it's crazy. It's like a process. So you going from high school to college. Like you watch a bunch of college players, and then it's like, oh, I'm playing against now these top-rated college players, these future pros or whatever. Now, like freshman year, going against them. Like, I'm playing against D'Angelo every year in practice, and he leaves, and now he's on covers with Kobe and stuff. And it's just like, it's just a crazy thing to watch and experience. Caleb, we've talked to a few of you guys about the fatigue recently. But as a freshman, they talk about the freshman wall and, and whatnot. How have you felt physically these last you know handful of weeks here, just you know going through your first college season, and especially with how the games have been compressed together? Yes. Um... I wouldn't say it's a wall, but yeah, it's kind of it weighs on your body for sure. It's just as far as your legs, and you got to make sure you get in get in the training room a lot and just try to recover as much as you can. I know you've you know lost weight and everything to try to just throughout this first season. I mean, what it's what has that whole side of it been like? Learning the physical demands of the college game. I guess. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot more as far as what you eat because you're gonna work out every day because you're gonna be in there practicing, going hard. So it's mostly just what you eat and nutrition. Okay, to kind of going off Doug's question a little bit. I mean, what what does that mean to you when you have guys like LeBron James who are huge Ohio State fans that are watching you and going crazy when you guys beat these teams like Michigan State? And like, what goes through your mind when you see, you know, LeBron shouting you guys out or whatever? It's crazy just because it's like you're just celebrities that you grew up watching, but you would think they would never know who you are or know what you're doing, and then all of a sudden, you check, you know, the internet, Instagram or something, and LeBron's tagging at Ohio State basketball or whatever it is, and it's just like, it's kind of what you ask for when you come to school like this. Like you want the attention, you want, you know, people like that to notice you. And kind of shifting over to back to the tournament, just for you especially, just how much does that loss to Rutgers last year in the first round stick in your guys' mind as you head into the uh, tournament? It definitely sticks in our minds, just because that was. I mean, that was the last experience you had in the tournament. I was losing the first day, first round against Rutgers. So I didn't play. I, mean, I got to watch the whole you know thing unfold. And it, was, it was rough. It was hard. And so I don't want to. I don't want to experience that again. And playing it, definitely not. What's it like now as you get ready for an opponent you're not sure who you're going to play yet? I mean, like, what's it like these next couple of days? Do you guys watch both teams? Do you? I guess how do you approach that mentally? Uh, yeah, we'll probably start watching a little bit of both teams. We've had a couple of days of practice, so light practices, but just kind of focusing on us. And then these next couple of practices, we'll focus on both of them. Would you want another chance at Penn State? I would like one, but I have no preference either. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys.